Subhashish Mukherjee and he says, I want to know the truth of black magic. My non-Bengali friends believe black magic has come into existence from West Bengal. How much <laughs> truth is there in this? It's a very Bengali question. <laughs> the truth <laughs> they're not asking how much truth in the black magic, they're asking whether it came from West Bengal or not. Well, uh, Kerala people believe it came from Kerala. It's little fishy, both the populations <laughs> Lot of fish in them, you know <laughs> So, uh, at one time in this country, as you have uh, a family doctor, they used to have a witch doctor. Almost every family had somebody to consult on these kind of aspects, because these arts were so widespread. Did it originate in Bengal? Did it originate in Kerala? No, I think it survived more in Kerala and Bengal today. In other places, it's gotten a little wiped out. Essentially, what you're talking about is occult. Occult is a certain technology that you can use your energies uh, to create certain impact. But unfortunately, it's gotten very negative press because market was for the negative. So people used it more negatively than positively. It could also be used positively. It's like any other technology, you can either use it positively or negatively. Unfortunately, the negative usage became overwhelmingly larger then the positive usage. So people think occult means it's a negative. No, the usage has become unfortunately negative. It could also be used in a positive manner. When I say it could also be used in a positive manner, you can transform life with it. You could uh, people make people help people out of their health situations, out of their psychological situations, various things could be done. Instead of that, because the market is mainly for the negative, somebody pays you to cause detriment to some other life at the benefit of somebody else's… to somebody else's benefit. To your detriment, somebody else's benefit it is being done. Because of that, it's gotten a negative image. Occult is like this. See, right now all of you have a phone. Suppose you had a phone hundred years ago, cell phone hundred years ago, you could claim you have occult powers because you could just take this and speak to somebody in America, everybody woo-hoo-hoo, they will shiver, okay? <laughs> yes or no? So occult is just technology, you could communicate, you could use your energies to communicate with somebody. But as modern technology becomes more and more subtle, the need for occult is receding, receding quite a bit because so many things that we used to do in occult, today can be delivered. You can send a WhatsApp message, you don't have to sit there focusing to send a message to somebody anymore. It took a lot more energy and time to do that. Now, message goes. So, messaging business has completely fallen out of occult. Otherwise, occult was mainly used to deliver messages to people in a different way. You have heard of telepathy and telecommunic… you know, not telecommunication, telekinetics and various other things where things were done from a distance. But today all those things are being done by regular technology, so occult or the requirement for occult is withdrawing. The need is just going away and probably most of it will go away. There are a few things that one could do, but above all, if… if we created a society, that whatever is given to you, you will use it in a positive way. Occult can be a tremendous possibility, as technology can be a tremendous possibility. As I mentioned earlier, 
Most of the technology is used for developing arms and armaments and bombs and nuclear bombs and more and more destructive things. The same thing could have been used for something else. Absolutely positive things could have been done, but that's not been done because the market is for the negative. Similarly, the same things have happened to uncle, your uh, Mukherjee friend. Uh <laughs> well, I think from what I hear, I think Kerala tops in the occult practices even today. Next comes West Bengal. Next probably some northeastern states have this, but they are very rudimentary occult. Kerala occult is quite sophisticated. You will see a lot of occult in North America, in the North American tribes, but very basic, mainly messaging occult. But now they all have smartphones, so it's all going out. I think Kashmir at one time had a lot of occult. Bengal, Kerala, Northeast, well, some parts of Andhra Pradesh and Orissa, but now market is done. Hello, yes. We were talking about life and death. I would like you to go back to the days when our sages, they will still be present in the body but will move out into the cosmos and maybe after some travel come back. So, in evolution, have we moved forward or we moved backwards? You only said it's already a round trip, so… So, it, it was… it m might have been a spiritual trip. Doesn't matter, it's a round trip, you came to the same point. Yes. So, uh, please sir, please. So, uh, if uh, these things have gone around quite a bit, somebody is doing astral travel, this is… this is called… Uh, this culture is called guru, guru it to guru pai. That means leave this body, go somewhere else and come back. Is such a thing possible or is it an evolutionary forward step? Uh, there is nothing evolutionary or even spiritual about it. It's more of occult nature. This is more practiced in African tribes, particularly the North American tribes of uh, leaving human body and taking on some other form. This is very prevalent. Even in India, in the occult practices, in certain tantric practices, these things are there. Generally in for lack of vocabulary, in hardcore spiritual process, these things are shunned. These things are seen as circus that you do, that uh, you don't try to display such things. But the very nature of life that you are right now is the life energies are not only projecting inward, they're also projecting outward. Now, uh, if you want to do certain thing, if for example, you're a doctor doing constant surgeries, if you know how to make it… make the proportion of this projection, largely I would say right now, right now looking at this crowd, I would say in this crowd on an average, the outward projection is just about ten percent, ninety percent it's inward projected, life… life energies, because people are in a self-preservation mode. You will see when people fall in love, that is they… F <laughs> they fell in love so badly that they're willing to die for it, you know? These days it's not like that. Uh, <laughs> a young lady asked her lover recently, we, are you willing to die for me as Romeo died for Juliet? The man said, my love is of an undying sort. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you do something where your involvement is such that your involvement becomes bigger than your survival process, then the life energies naturally project outward. 
If you're not able to project your life energies outward, you will not do anything in the world which is uh, significant in other people's experience. If you sit here, you can have ten percent turned inward, ninety percent out. If you do this, you will see whatever the hell you do, people go phenomenally impressed. If you are ninety percent in, ten percent out, whatever you may do, you may do great things, but still nobody will be impressed. So when you're doing your surgery, even if you can be fifty percent outwardly projected, it would make a big difference in the way you're doing the same thing. You may be trained, you may anyway do it right, but it'll make a huge difference. This is why always, you know, you know like uh, this business uh, events that happen in the ashram, they're always asking me this, how Sadhguru? See, because in this over… Uh, this is thirty-seventh year, in this thirty-seven years, at any time in the world, at least Anywhere between two hundred and fifty to three hundred in engineering programs are going on in any given day. In this thirty-seven years, not a single program has been abandoned. Not a single appointment have been late to. I've never been late to a single event in this thirty-seven years. And not just me, the whole organization functioning like this. People ask, how? The important thing is, you have to keep your instinct of self-preservation out. There is an instinct of self-preservation, there is a longing to expand. If you hold on to instincts of self-preservation, you build walls around yourself. And these walls of self-preservation are also the walls of self-imprisonment. But if your longing to expand becomes the prime factor of your life, you will see your life is more… life energies are more outward projected. Particularly when you're treating your patients, if your life energies are outward projected, you will find phenomenal results with everything that you do. Whatever skills you have, they will multiply. If it's inward projected, ah, oh, it's a drag. No wonder you will be looking forward to the weekend. Oh uh -huh.